Hex OS versus Zimmer OS, the tortoise and the hare. Welcome to the raid room. Now, let's get it out of the way straight away before someone puts it in the comments. Hex OS isn't an operating system. It really isn't. I would argue it is a refinement of true NASC scale, which is what it's built on. But nonetheless, we are still comparing, arguably, an entire operating system with another. So when we're talking about Hex OS in this video, we are talking about true NAS and Hex OS together when we are comparing it against Zimmer OS. Because a number of you, when I did a video a little while ago about Zimmer OS arguably being one of the best beginner custom DIY free out the gate NAS software solutions in the market, I said it was one of the best. And a number of you reached out and wanted to know how it compared and whether they should opt for Hex OS built on true NAS scale. And that's what this the discussion is going to be about the strengths of both, the weaknesses of both, and hopefully helping you understand which one you should go for. Um, so let's crack on with Hex first. Now, Hex, at least in terms of public access, is only about eight to nine months old. It's around about November 2024 when the brand rolled out early access to Hex OS. Now, if you wanted all of the features of Hex OS that aren't graphical, Newsflash, you can already get them in the fact that you can get TrueNAS Scale completely for free. You download it, use, you know, Rufus or Blanche Etcher or something, stick it on a USB, bang, load it up. You've got TrueNAS completely for free, although it is remarkably complicated. And that is where HexOS lives. It was backed by numerous investors. Probably one of the most well-known, of course, was uh, Linus LTT himself. who did a, an investment of a quarter of a million dollars into this um, comparative startup, but they were eventually, if not very early doors, partnered with iX Systems, people behind TrueNAS itself. And it was to create a user-friendly kind of gateway, doorway version, call it what you will, of TrueNAS. And HexOS is meant to be giving you the user-friendly, easy, GUI access and control of the likes of Synology DSM, QNAPQTS, and more, and packaging it easily so a myriad of decisions, configuration choices, the more you make, well, effectively one click at a time without knocking around with data sets, jails, and more. Now, in that time, in the eight to nine months that it's been publicly accessible, or at the least 12 months or so since it was officially publicly revealed in name, I will say one of the largest contentious points about it, despite the fact that it has already started delivering upon some of the early stuff, it has to be said that the biggest criticisms are one, the price, and two, the client tool or the absence thereof. So that first one, when it rolled out, the price tag for the very first month was $99. It was sort of semi-linked to a Black Friday deal, but it looked like that was early bums on seats. $99 for a lifetime license. On top of that, since then, it's been $199 for early access. When it goes in, presumably into a full 1.0 version, that is where you're going to go for the official targeted price of $299. There's no monthly subscriptions. It is just a fixed lifetime price tag there. Now, again, let's not lose sight of the fact that you are paying for a wrapper in many ways. It is a dense and well populated and well configured with a lot of preset wrapper, but you are still dealing with something that's wrapping around TrueNAS. Now that may change. They may introduce proprietary features into just Hex OS down the road or access to certain features, platforms, and services that are only within Hex OS. But at least now at the time of recording, everything you've got in Hex OS is only access, I mean, is already accessible via a slightly more complicated method or very complicated in some ways on true NAS scale. It is attractive to look at. It is incredibly straightforward to set up your storage. There are, um, I believe, three applications right now that are all one-click installed. Um, then on top of that, the ease of uh, creating new users, what folders they can access. All of that has been done incredibly straightforward. But that leads us on to the second problem people have with it currently. There's no client tool. Right now, it needs the internet, which for most home labbers, and especially those with even a modicum of understanding about moving away from cloud services, is a deal breaker because HexOS, you want your data, your entire server, to be at your control, completely severed. And a lot of that is to do with having a client tool to get the job done. Doing the whole thing in the web GUI is not appealing to a lot of users. And most users, that was one of the heaviest criticisms that came out on day one of it. And that was even before it was purchasable on that Black Friday $99 promotion there. Again, we have done some updates on it. I think we did a three and a six month update on HexOS along with the, I should say, the big Q2 update there. 
and HexOS seems to be nailing down the foundations so they can build up with things like a file folder management system there, a client tool being integrated there, more applications, uh, community recommended folder creation. And one of the issues they've got with installing apps is it has to pre-create the folders, which may not be best suited to a lot of users' own bespoke setups there. So I understand there are hurdles, but nonetheless, that it is nowhere near complete, but they're not pretending for it to be complete when they call it on the road to version 0.1. But the whole point of this video was to discuss whether you should go for HexOS or Zimmer OS. Now, Zimmer OS has been around longer. In fact, Zimmer OS is about two years old since initial alpha testing publicly. But you can see it on GitHub. But it was actually built on something that already existed for a few years called Casa OS, a much lighter platform designed for much smaller hardware profiles. But Zimmer OS integrates a greater degree of rate configuration there, a large degree of app installation, control, management, and more. Now, the device is um, a device that has Zimmer OS installed on it. Again, a full operating system can be accessed via the web browser, but crucially, it doesn't need to be. It arrives with client applications for desktop and mobile, and alongside allowing full severing of internet services to get the job done and use the full spec of the services, on top of that, you have integrated features like peer drop systems, where you can have the app installed on a few different devices and securely and using P2P services with encryption, drop and drag files between systems, as well as integrating VPNs with OpenVPN if you choose to. Um, OpenVPN services, I should say. Now, on top of that, you've also got Thunderbolt support. So if you've got a system that has Thunderbolt 4 or USB 4, currently from what I could see only Intel platforms, you've actually got a DIY NAS software solution, a free OS that actually allows you finally to take advantage of direct attached Thunderbolt and USB 4 storage, depending on your hardware configuration. That is a deal breaker for many, but much like HexOS, it still doesn't feel completely finished. It lacks a lot of the uh, features that a traditional turnkey NAS solution for lights of Synology more have. And a big part of that is to do with the fact that Zimmer OS was designed for this. This is the Zimmer Cube. There's a Zimmer Cube and the Zimmer Cube Pro. Now there's only those two. There's been recently the Zimmer, Cube, uh, Zimmer Board 2, uh, which has just concluded its initial crowdfunding on Kickstarter. But nonetheless, that is clearly Ice Whale, the, the company that made Zimmer OS, that is their focus. They are focusing on those two. They're letting the software being more universally available, but clearly development is being specifically targeted to those hardware platforms. And therefore, it does limit, arguably, its deployment on bespoke DIY deployments and how many of those features you're going to be able to use and how many the brand themselves are prepared to support and work with to get certain things working when they are giving you a free bit of software. Also, we are discussing a platform, uh, a software platform coming from China, which I know for a lot of users is going to be problematic in terms of security and indeed in some companies, just a sheer inability to deploy solutions that arrive with Chinese network software. It's a sad truth, but true and with arguably reason. Also, although they have access to a repository of containerized applications, none of them I have had their files and folder creation made to be truly one click. They're one click to download the image and load it onto a live container, but you still have to go into the settings and tweak them significantly to give them the right amount of access in your system. That's something that HexOS is one of its chief selling factors. The fact that gradually over time, as they get the routine rhythm and the foundation aligned, that they are going to allow you to truly one click an app and install it and you have access to the right data while simultaneously not having access to the wrong data or the secure data you don't want it to see. Now, Philip Floppity, there is still no Hex OS client app. And indeed, given that TrueNAS presumably has pumped money into Hex OS, I say TrueNAS, I mean IX Systems, have clearly pumped money in and they don't have a client application to start with, it's a weird omission for them not to have client tools. And it's clearly something from Zimmer when you go to their GitHub that they nailed down exceedingly early in development to ensure they had the Z space application, uh, sorry, uh, the Z tool, the Z client tool up and running early doors. That was one of their priorities. And fair play to them, it has stood to their benefit significantly, it would appear to be a dropping in the US before connectivity there. Now, from here, if you are a novice user, 
I still can't recommend HexOS at this time. I like what HexOS are doing, and if they can commit and deliver on the promises they're making, I do think it's going to be an interesting platform, and I do think it stands to rock the boat for other OSs like Unraid and more in the market. But as it stands right now, it just feels like a skin. It just feels like a wrapper, and all of the things it's saying it can do, it hasn't delivered upon. If they just rolled out the client app out the gate, I think more users would find it, find it less contentious about the price tag early doors. And for a lifetime license as well, thinking I want a lifetime back from this. And as a beginner, although I'm not gonna say Zimmer OS is anything like a Synology DSM in terms of usability, I will say it is very easy for users to understand and it has a lot more of those quality of life deliveries, which they're able to do, of course, because they're designing the software from the ground up. Whereas HexOS has to build on top of something that exists and takes exceedingly complicated structure and make it chewable, crayon user-friendly. So for the beginners, I really can only recommend Zimo OS at this time. But as your skill set levels up and your needs, requirements, scalability, and more um, add up, it has to be said that HexOS becomes more attractive thanks to TrueNAS, thanks to, again, combining stability, configuration, and security of TrueNAS alongside usability and custom um, creation that's being built into the front end of HexOS gradually over time. I just hope a year from now we can make a video about this where HexOS can more suitably justify its early price tag there. Yes, it's a lifetime price tag, so it's not really fair to say they have to justify it on day dot, but even then, early doors, there's just not enough on the table for some users to consider this worth the jump. But there you go, what do you guys think? Have you used both of these platforms? Which one are you finding meets your needs? Let me know in the comments below. And if you've got a suggestion for the next raid room, you know where the comments are, let me know. Apart from that, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.